7 to 11 on 3AW, we welcome Nigel from Nigel's Animal Rescue to the studio. How are you, Nigel? I'm very well, and yourself, and you've got the bandage off your hand now. Bandage is off my hand, getting better, but still a little tender, so I shake hands left-handed, which confuses yeah. the heck out of people, i found. And Phil, Phil's foot's getting oh, better. Oh, yeah, well. don't worry about me. We're I'm all on healing. I'm ready for a bun dance. And you're looking fit and healthy. Any problems? No? No, no, no not with me. I'm uh, fit and healthy. Excellent. Now, you have brought in a special guest for us tonight. I have brought us another guest in. And a for those who are uh, regular listeners to 3AW, especially in the late hours as we have now heading into the early morning, you might remember this theme. We'll introduce our special guest this evening. Tonight we've got Nicholas Swift. The Outback Legend. Absolutely. This man used to keep me up every Tuesday morning at one o'clock. I'd have to be tuned in to 3AW uh -huh. with Keith McGowan to listen to this man and all of his stories. Good evening, chaps. How are we? Get on it. We're well. <laughs> I'm, I'm normally only see you at La Contadina and Rothdown Street. We do, we do. Phil. What are you That's doing right. in, in Docklands? And what are you doing away from the Alice? No, well, you see, I, I get, still go to Alice fairly regularly, well, once a year or so, Philip, and I go to Cooper Petty quite a lot. Yeah. But I'm down by the seaside, down by, by sunny Sorrento at the moment, which oh, is very wonderful. nice. You know, it's quite a juxtaposition to the well, Alice and Springs. I visit you and your Pat at Blair Gary sometimes. Yeah, well, there's always a barbecue sizzling away there. Mm. Awaiting you and Keith you. and everybody. <laughs> now, the, the two of you would have struck up quite a good friendship, I imagine. You sit around and talk about spiders and snakes and other things that scare people. Yes, well, uh, I did supply Nick some of the spiders when he did the st uh, spider stint in the city. Oh, did you? When he uh, had, what, 400 spiders, wasn't it, Nick? About four or 500. But unfortunately, uh, uh, they always used to... Um, uh, spiders don't like each, <laughs> each other very much, Nigel. Oh. Oh. And so I had to get a couple of replenishments. You had to top them up every so often. <laughs> oh, you each yeah, other. one of the top of one of the top ups. <laughs> really? So they, uh, you put two spiders in a jar, or two spiders, a heap of spiders in a uh, uh. Um, in, in a room together, and uh, the next thing there's a gnashing, a gnashing of of, mm. um, of fangs, and uh, nature, one of the spiders, nature is cruel. Absolutely, and one spider is rushing around with its uh, with its mate and its jaws. Yeah. Now, have you guys ever worked together on any projects? Uh, no, we're not on any projects apart from collecting some spiders for that particular stunt there. But um, about uh, was it about uh, two months ago or three months ago? I uh, did a five thousand kilometre drive for Nick. Oh yeah, for his birthday. Bash. That was for his birthday. That was bash. the one. Yeah, you yes. didn't turn up. You, you I, guys. I was, overseas. <laughs> I was overseas. You're invited. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, so we went up to Cooper Petty and uh, we're driving up the uh, the sandy tracks through the Growler Range. No, the Gawler Range is fantastic. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it was. And every time that we saw a little piece of corrugated tin that had blown off or some of the old shacks up there, we had to stop and lift it up and start searching for the lizards and did, spiders. Did you get to Oud and Adada while you were there? No, we didn't go that far. And just, isn't there a painted desert there or a moonscape? I was just telling Nigel about yes. it uh, on the way through. It's about 200 kilometres north of of, um, of Cooper Pity. Yes. Cooper Pity is boasts this place called the, the Breakaways. Uh, uh, the painted desert is the Breakaways by 10. It's just, mm. the most spectacular place in the Australia. What, any time of the day or any sunrise uh, and sunset? Uh, no, any time of the day. Oh. The, the, um, the colours are just... There must be some wonderful minerals in the sand there. Absolutely, Philip. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And they, they go from a brilliant yellow to down sort of muted browny tones and earthy yeah. tones to pure white. Are there still opals in the ground there in Cooper Pedia? Are there still opals to be mined? Absolutely, Philip. But uh, there's never plenty of opals. But you see, when you're driving from Port Augusta right through to uh, up to um, even up to Alice Springs and further mm. on, there's yeah. uh, there's opal bearing country everywhere there. It's yeah. just that there happens to be a town at Cooper Pedia, and people go there because mm. there's a uh, there's a supermarket there, and it's easy to easy. Yeah. Um, get uh, find there. I tell you what distresses me, and your article in the Melbourne Observer every week that doesn't distress me. I look forward to that. That's fantastic. Yeah. On the same page as uh, Kevin Trask. But um, disappointingly, to see that Alice Springs has become somewhat of a crime capital of Australia over the years, and and I want to ask you why. It's uh, it's un unfortunate. You see a lot of um, uh, there's a lot of well to not to put too find a point there's a lot of Aboriginal problems there and a lot of um, a lot of communities out, uh, out right way out in the bush are dry or have turned dry or oh. become dry mm. and the, the people that are used to drinking uh, in these communities the alcoholics they move to town they move to Alice Springs yeah. and move in there with their friends and relations and a lot of these houses have got 20 or 30 people living in them uh. and camping in them and uh, they just uh, unfortunately drink booze all the time and that creates a lot of problems a lot of shops have closed down as yeah, a result a of, of that haven't they yeah, yeah which is very 
say. Do they have a very large white population there, a permanent population? Yeah, I think so. there's about 26 million people there. Um, not 26 million. No. <laughs> <laughs> not there there million. isn't that many in Australia, mate. 26,000 probably. Oh, Sorry. Okay. And the um, um, uh, about 500 American people living there because they oh. work at the Pine Gap base. Of course. And yeah. we call it the spy base up there. Mm -hmm. So what has Nicholas Swift been doing in the uh, couple of years since you've been on, uh, when you used to be on with Keith McGowan? Well, still I, uh, I still got to keep a PD a bit, Simon, but uh, uh, as you well know, I've got a, um, a store in the in the town or in, in Phil, um, Flinders Lane in town, which my kids run. I started many, many years ago and I gave it to the kids and uh, my son and daughter, Jonas and I think I run that now, and I'm there all, all weekend, every weekend, and usually one or two days during the week sort of helping out, and um, uh, I'm, I'm doing a bit of writing. I'm writing for the Observer, and I'm, yeah. I'm working on my uh, autobiography at the moment. So. Oh, great. And you still got your shop in the city, in Melbourne? In the one, the one in Flinders Lane. Which, that's uh, the, one. the address again, please? 175 Flinders Lane. Oh, yeah. And are you in touch with McGowan and Angela? Every so often, I uh, out paths cross, yes. Oh, that's right. Rob, yes. What a character. I really miss him <laughs> uh, being around, you know. It's funny. I was just saying to, to Simon before, um, uh, he just I introduced him to the Outback at one stage. He said, yeah. I'm not going to... Uh, mm -hmm. um, uh, up to uh, over to Ireland for my holidays. I'm mm -hmm. going to come and see you in Cooper P at yeah. Alice Springs. Yeah. And he just turned it on. And now he just travels the country. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Just get, so get in the yeah. car and go. Off he goes. It's and a, what a fabulous weekend we had in Cooper P. It was, was a real write off, wasn't oh, it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, you're so hospitable, though, Nick. No, it's really nice to take uh, show people around, including your good self. Yes, and he got to show me around in Tanya, around uh, Cooper P. and got into yeah. the underground houses. Isn't and, that great? And oh. One one thing, when I um, met up with Nick, we actually met at Streaky Bay, uh, which is down in South Australia on the coastline there, and uh, met up with uh, a tourist of all people that uh, he said he'd been out fishing, and he caught these razor fish. And I've never heard of razor fish before, but I've actually bought one of them in. I so know it's not very good oh. radio, but what I'm holding <laughs> up for people on the internet, or they've got the new app from the App Store, which yes, I had a look at that tonight, and no. that works very, very well. Excellent. But what I'm holding up, how would you describe that, Simon? Uh, it looks, looks like a tooth from something really big. <laughs> it is. It's a mollusk. So it's not an actual fish as such. It's like a scallop. Yeah. And if you get sort of like a, a heart shape and cut the heart in half... That's the way you sort of describe yep. the shape. Yep. Well, half of that's buried into the sand. Oh. So you've got the top section sticking out, which is why they call it a razor fish. They're very, very sharp. But uh, if you like scallops, razor fish is like champagne of scallops. Really? really? And um, they're very rare, obviously. Well, there's uh, certain places around Australia that you can get them. Streaky Bay is one area. Okay. And um, so uh, Tanya and I got the waders on and we went out into the water. Oh. You've got to get these at low tide. And um, we found them and uh, brought them back and Nick had never heard of them and the party that we were with never he heard of them either. So you get a little piece of meat out of the centre of them, the size of a 50 cent piece. Is that all? And uh, you eat it raw and yeah. it was delicious. Uh -huh. So uh, You wouldn't want to tread on one, would you? They've well, got that very sharp uh, Extremely shells. sharp shells at the top, which is yes. why they're called razor fish. And sure. I think you should have uh, waders or some mm. sort of footwear mm. on your feet because, yes, they mm. would slice your feet. Would they be up there. in the barrier reef as well? Um, I would think not, I don't know. Probably a bit felt, warm no. up in that area there, warm. no. Oh, would it yeah, be too yeah. warm for them? Mm. Yeah, I think Great Australian Bite is where they live. Like yeah, yeah, there's a yeah, few, few places around Australia that you get. And are, they, so are they peculiar to Australian waters, are they? I would say so. I don't I know much about them. I, did, I knew nothing about them until that particular <laughs> night. And, um, yeah, so it's just something very interesting. Uh, Razor fish. You, you could really do yourself an injury on that, could Oh, yeah. You? That is could. nasty. You could. And they, um, in areas, if you've got a, a metre by metre area, you could have, like, two hundred of these. They're, they're a social sort of mollusk. They all go, grow in family groups. So you're walking through the soft sand and all of a sudden you feel these hard things under your feet and, uh, well, you know that you found a patch of them. Mm. So we, we had about 12 people that tried it and uh, oh, Nick, they, they all liked it, didn't they? There was about 25 of us at the, at the pub at Streaky yeah. Bay and, uh, and <laughs> Simon Tanya said, oh, I, I, 
uh, uh, Knives on Tenure, so, so he said, let's go and find some. So oh, off they went for half did. an hour, yeah. we came up we with a bucket full of them, and we, oh, it was delicious. It now, was, was, yeah, back in Cooper Pedy, what would be the most dangerous thing in Cooper Pedy? Uh, well, some Cooper Pedy uh, residents, basically. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Actually, Cooper Pedy is a very peaceful sort of a place, and um, if there's bad, you know, there's goodies and baddies, and uh, birds of a feather flock together. So um, you yeah, had rattlesnakes there in the desert. I oh, know there's king brown snakes in the yeah, desert. Okay. Yeah, and yeah. scorpions, and of course. scorpions. Yeah, plenty of scorpions mm, and yeah. spiders and stuff. There's all those things, but they're, they're not confined to Cooper Pedy. But mm. um, uh, people can go and buy gel in cases of gel ignite, as can I with a mine's right. Sometimes there's a bit of danger there. Well, the worst <laughs> thing is it's falling down one of the mine shafts. Of course, they're everywhere, aren't they? All over town. Right. And you don't walk around willy nilly. Now no. I know Nigel's had a near miss where he, uh, you had a snake, Nigel, that uh, you thought may have just nicked your finger or something at one stage. And yes, that's right. Many years ago, have you had a, a near death experience with any of the animals you've handled, Nick? Basically, yes. It was the same spot we we're just talking about before. <laughs> the same spot as the same snake has got. Uh, it's got Nigel's a red belly black snake, and I mm. thought I'd tamed it down. I'd caught this is quite a few years ago now, and I thought I'd tamed it down sufficiently, which means handling it to make it to get it oh. to know you and I was just free handling letting it sort of crawl all over me I hadn't tamed it down so I went nip in there and probably about 10 minutes later I got a, a really splitting headache then half an hour later violently ill the next oh. two days like the worst food poisoning by three and uh, wow. I, I knew I wasn't going to die but it wasn't a pleasant experience okay. so, now, guys, good way to get out of work here, uh, <laughs> and thanks for bringing a special guest in um, anything you'd like to promote Nick to our audience well just uh, I'm, I'm there every weekend at my little stores uh, flogging my opals and showing people and how the name of the it. shop again the name is Lightning Ridge Opal Mines and you're always there at the weekend always there at the weekend oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. so I've got a few snakes and spiders there so uh, people can come and, and pat them if they and want What's your address again? It's 175 Flinders Lane. You, you, I recall you bought, you used to have a larger car or something, you bought a little tiny car yes. to do the big run up to <laughs> Cooper Pedy right. and back. You're still driving that I'm or still, is that gone? It's got 287,000 kilometres on the clock now. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's a little high on dog gets and it's great. That's it. Yeah, you don't, you don't need a four wheel drive for up there? For up there, well most of it's bitumen. Yes, uh, I guess so. Yeah, yeah. As, as you remember. Mm, no, of course. No, no, no. Phil, Phil would need one but that's just the way he drives. Now <laughs> Nigel, thank you very much for bringing uh, Nick in. What a thrill. He's such a good mate of mine from way back. Anything you'd like to promote in uh, as we say goodbye? Right, well, yeah, very quickly, magpie season has started. I've uh, received a couple of calls already for swooping birds. Yes. So anybody's being swooped by a magpie, point at the magpie, look at it with your eyes, and if you do that, it will, won't physically make contact with you. But okay. if you drop your arm and look away, he'll get you every time. Mm. All right, and give us a contact number for you. 0427 5 Three three zero eight three, and your website again, animalrescue.com.au. Okay, it's an easy one. See you at the North Pole in February, old boy. Yes, we will. We'll talk more about that later. Oh, and yeah. then, Nick, the then, uh, then uh, Nigel and I are off to Borneo later next year. Yes, fantastic. Oh, yeah, we're on the move. Okay, good on you. I ha if you've heard my act, I have to keep travelling, boys, mm. as you've noticed. It's on the run. <laughs> Thanks so much. Good night, to you, Nick. Good night, Nigel. Thanks, boys. Thank you, Philip.